It's time to weigh in on the new 6600 XT and the first one we're taking a look at is the ASUS Dual OC version. Now you might be wondering why we didn't release this video when everyone else did. Well that's because our cards arrived on the afternoon of the review embargo being lifted and we quite literally didn't have any time to test it. So if you're watching this in the future, you've got no idea what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to get on with it. AMD said that the availability for the 6600 XT won't be an issue this time around, but given what we've already seen over the last year, I'm... I'm not so sure, but I guess we're going to have to wait to see. Availability aside, is the 6600 XT coming too late to the party, or is it going to be worth your money? Let's find out. ASUS and MSI sent cards over for us to check out, so we decided to run both of these cards through our regular suite of benchmarks on both Windows and Linux, and see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've tested on the same test bench. We always use the same gear. Now, as usual, there is lots of data to unpack with this video, and there's chapters in all of our videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of any video that we do here on the channel, it's as easy as mousing over that progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description. But at the same time, Make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what we're trying to say in this video. These are the out of the box figures for this card as well. And for people who want to know how these cards overclock, we're going to come back to this in a separate video. We're going to do that probably over on kernel control because there's a few things I want to do first. So let's get all this data unpacked. We used our regular test bench for all of this testing to give you guys accurate results based on the testing of this exact hardware. And I also suspect that we'll probably be redoing everything soon again, and I'm not looking forward to that, but we've got to do it. All right, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic little pause button at any time during the video to take a look at those graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing is that at 1080p, both 6600 XTs are coming in just above the 5700 XT, and that's not something that you're going to see in every test. In Linux at 1080p, the 6600 XT comes in behind the 3060Ti, but be aware though, with this kernel combo and this pre-release driver, it's only telling a little bit of the story, and this is the only combo that worked at the time of testing. If we compare Windows versus Linux performance, Windows comes out on top by a single frame. In Windows at 1440p, we're seeing the 6600 XT be about one frame faster than the 5700 XT, and that's within a margin of error. If we look at Linux, we're seeing the inverse with the 5700 XT beating out the 6600 XT. And if we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing that Windows comes out on top. At 4K, we're seeing the performance of both 6600 XTs we tested and the 3060 being about on par. The performance is a, more than a little underwhelming at 4K, but yeah, we did test this out of curiosity. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing almost the same stories that we did with Windows, with the 3060 edging out the ASUS Dual by a single frame. If we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing Windows come out on top once again. Let's move on to superposition. For the superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We use a 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We sometimes get comments along the lines of us using stock OpenGL versus DX11 for comparison versus Linux and Windows. We're comparing the out of the box experience only. And yeah, let's, let's do that. First up with the 1080p Extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the 6600 XT equaling the performance of the 5700 XT. In Linux at 1080p Extreme, we're seeing the 6600 XTs pull away from both the 5700 XT and the 3060. And if we compare Windows and Linux, Windows comes out on top, but not by a lot. At 1440p in Windows, the 6600 XT comes in well behind the 5700 XT and the 3060 Ti. But in Linux at 1440p, the gap closes with the 6600 XT beating out the 5700 XT. Comparing Windows to Linux, the 6600 XT is faster by two frames. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 6600 XT coming behind the 3060 Ti and the 5700 XT. 
in Linux at 4K, we're seeing a pretty similar pattern for the 6600 XT. And if we compare Windows and Linux at 4K, we're seeing them perform within a few frames of one another. All right, next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and in Linux. At 1080p in Windows, the 6600 XT is mediocre. Also, don't be fooled by Basemark's high FPS scores. It's just a benchmark. In Linux at 1080p, the 6600 XT had more of a predictable run. AMD GPUs typically don't perform as well in Basemark, and this is something that we've observed over the last 18 months. If we compare Windows to Linux at 1080p, Windows results are all over the place. I retested both the 6700 XT and the 5700 XT in Basemark, and these are the results I got again. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. At 1440p in Windows, the test is a lot more predictable with the 6600 XT getting beaten by the 3060. In Linux at 1440p, we're seeing the 6600 XT get slapped down by the 3060 Ti. If we compare Windows to Linux, we can see that Windows is coming out on top, but not by a lot, especially when base mark is concerned. At 4K in both Windows and in Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p with Windows coming out on top, but the gaps closing. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida 64 and we couldn't get the Asus Dual OC 6600 XT above 54 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Obviously you're seeing the hotspot temperature as well, which is telling a little bit of a different story, but even though those thermals are quite good. This result is actually a lot better than I expected, and it seems as though Asus have got the thermal performance just about right. That counts for something, right? Based on everything else I'm gonna say in this video. And I always mention this, but it's important to note that we're running on an open air test bench, and the results in a closed system will be quite a bit different from what we record here, but we include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've tested on the entire channel. As far as power consumption at idle, it's only drawing around four watts of power, and this is a lot lower than I thought it would be. I was predicting somewhere in the vicinity of maybe six to seven watts, and this is showing the real power efficiency of our DNA too. We observed it hitting a board power draw, maxing out at around 115 watts of full load over that one hour testing period as well. We also observed the Asus Dual OC to be audible with zero coil wine over our stress testing period. And by audible, I mean, you could probably hear it, but again, open air test system, you're gonna hear absolutely everything in a closed system you probably won't hear this card at all. Now these observations for acoustics make way more sense than actually measuring them because those numbers just don't make sense to anyone really. And the acoustics are only really tangible if the computer's sitting on the desk right next to you. Otherwise it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The Asus Shule 6600 XT OC edition uses a single PCIe power connector. It's got no RGB, so there's no need to run any lighting software for it. It's also a 2.5 slot card that measures around 243 millimeters in length. It's quite a small card. Now, as far as availability of this particular 6600 XT from ASUS, I got no idea. But as mentioned, AMD reckons there will be plenty of supply for all vendors cards around MSRP. But yeah, we're just gonna have to wait to see a few days and come back and we're gonna talk about this more with the MSI card when there's actually cards for you to buy. If you, if you can buy them, we don't know yet. As far as pricing for the ASUS Dual 6600 XT OC Edition, I'm not sure about the US price. Maybe I'll add it on screen right now, but I do know the Australian pricing, $699 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. And yeah, this is again, subject to availability, which we just don't know at the time of filming. Oh, okay, look, that's all out of the way. The 6600 XT, huh? I, I think this card's come a little bit too late and I, I get it. Like they wanted to guarantee availability with these cards, but at the same time, where was this card six months ago? And why is the performance so underwhelming compared to the 3060 Ti and even the 3060? Now, I'm not quite sure why this card exists in the first place. 
in this price range. The card isn't filling a hole in the market because regardless of whatever the supposed MSRP is slated to be, this will probably be another card that will be expensive. Now, I'm happy to eat my words at a later date, but I don't think so. If the card had an MSRP that was about, let's say, 50 to 70 US dollars less, I would say that it would be bang on for filling that hole in the market. But the fact that it's demanding a premium doesn't really get me very excited. All you need to do is look back at the 5700 XT launch when that card was supposed to be like over a hundred US dollars more expensive when it launched. But a few days before AMD was like, hey, that's too much money. And they dropped the price to satisfy the market. Now, I don't see them doing that here at all because of the world that we're currently living in with shortages and raw materials and all the shipping delays. I mean, look at this video, for example. It's a whole day late because of shipping delays. Now, I, I'm not trying to justify the price from Asus or AMD at all. I just think it's too expensive and that it's just not exciting for those prices. If it was cheaper, I would say this would be a definite buy, but it's not cheaper. That's the reality. The truth is though, all of this is just speculation until it's actually available to buy, which over the next few weeks or months is probably gonna tell the full story, but I'm not excited about this card. Let us know if you guys are excited about the 6600 XT in general. I'm not sold on the idea of this card at all. Uh, it's not just the Asus card either. I think the 6600 XT overall is just way too expensive. I'm not sure what AMD is going to do about that rumored 6600 if this is the price for this, which should probably be the other way around, but yeah, it's going to be a mess. <laughs> Why didn't this come out six months ago? Very, very confusing card. Obviously, I'm going to cover the other ones as well. I've got some MSI ones and some Gigabyte ones coming as well. I'm going to cover all of them because it is interesting. Maybe they'll drop the price. We don't know yet, but there's stuff I want to do in Linux as well that you Linux folk out there might find interesting. So make sure you subscribe to Kernel Control. I'll have another video with this card coming over to Kernel Control in the next day or so. So stick around, stay tuned, and I'll see you on the flip flop. Anyways, if you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. Um. <laughs>